Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Recent stage four load shedding and a spat during a SCOPA oversight meeting at Megawatt Park have again raised questions about who is to blame for South Africa's power crisis. Terence Screamer joins me to discuss the finger pointing. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. Is it fair to say that finger pointing is normal after any bout of load shedding? Yes, this has been the case right back to the early 2000s when this first started. And it was a very, very tense period when we first entered load shedding and there was a lot of uh, blaming and uh, cool heads did not prevail. Um, there was an attempt to bring everyone together and there were a lot of meetings between uh, government, business, labor. There was a big summit around energy and uh, the temperatures were high and tempers flared. And uh, the response politically was to try and eliminate load shedding as much as possible. So we went through a period, remember in the run up to the the 2020 World, World Cup when we wanted to show that we could keep the lights up, so we pushed back uh, planned maintenance. Then even after the 2010 World Cup, we didn't then uh, prioritize planned maintenance then either. It was really keep the lights on at all costs type of mentality that was helpful to the Eskom leadership because it took the pressure off at uh, Megawatt Park. It was also very helpful for the political leadership, but it wasn't helpful for the operations at Eskom. And there was a view that this new capacity that would come on through Madupi and Kusilia would save the day and then there would be space in the system to, um, to do the maintenance. That, as we know, never materialised. We still don't have a full uh, uh, Kusilia up and running. One of Madupi's units has exploded, so that's also not fully up and running. Ngula took a long time to come on stream. So we had those massive delays, we had the, the defects. So really it's all come back, all the chickens have come back to roost and there's just not been enough maintenance and those years of keeping the lights on at all costs uh, are, was, was probably the wrong thing. It was, it was good for society, society prefers it when the lights on, it's very frustrating uh, when the lights are off but there should have been a more honest conversation both in the run up to the World Cup and after the World Cup. Uh, and during the periods where we started having more load shedding because of the delays to Madupi and Kusile, we should have see, been possibly more honest about uh, the fact that this lever might have to be pulled. Uh, and now we are pulling it at very intense 4,000 megawatt levels, which is really frustrating. The blame game was amplified this time as a result of an ugly showdown during a parliamentary oversight visit. Yes, uh, this was unfortunate uh, and unnecessary in some ways. But other, on the other hand, quite fortunate, and I'll explain it in this way, is that it was unfortunate in the sense that it showed that the lawmakers haven't really kept up to date uh, fully with the, the, the crisis and some of the problems at Eskom, uh, and their questions were misplaced in some ways because of this lack of attention to detail. On the other hand, it's not the platform during a very intensive period of load shedding, uh, stage four, uh, you're going to expect a fairly uh, antagonistic atmosphere and a board member has to be accountable. That's what they're there to do and needs to keep a cool head. And yes, make it as clear as possible as to where the problems lie and they don't just lie with the current board and the current uh, ESCA management. But they, are, they have agency and they have an ability to uh, affect uh, how bad and how intense the load shedding is through the, the management interventions, through the board interventions. And uh, the oversight committee from SCOPA has every right to ask about those. And obviously it is tense, but the fortunate side of this is that it made uh, open people's eyes to the fact that Eskom is very much part of the problem, but Eskom isn't very much part of the whole solution to load shedding. And I think it's, it's important for people to understand that it's given society, um, moved society just beyond the point of Eskom is a failing state-owned enterprise to understanding that there were some real missteps and policy mistakes. Uh, there's been uh, a lot of a lack of oversight as well from lawmakers, but particularly from the executive and decisions that were made and then of, of course the state capture years. You know, it, it, it really did, during a very dark period of load shedding, did shine a light uh, on many of the other very complicated, complex uh, issues around Eskom that have led us to this. President Sora Ramaphosa has also weighed in. Yes, now 
uh, there's a very strong feeling within the ANC that he should have been much harder. Uh, there should have been a harder line against the current Eskom leadership and management. And he didn't take that line. He's, he's backed them fully. He says we owe uh, the Eskom board and the management our full support. He praised the hard work of Eskom employees in his letter. So this was a big, strong message that he is not into this game of cutting off heads or this continual revolving door at Megawatt Park. We have this team, we have these problems, we, we have a real skills crisis at Eskom. It doesn't really help to be changing the board and uh, the executive, no matter how angry we are with the reaction uh, of, a board, of a certain board member. We need cool heads to prevail and we need this management and this leadership team to stay the course. He's provided very, very important cover, I think, for the current uh, Eskom leadership. Uh, of course, there's still some water under the bridge to flow because uh, I think there is a lot of anger within the ANC about uh, the, the, the way the board member uh, dealt with uh, this, this issue and uh, given how complex the issue is. But I think that uh, the president's reaction is correct. He's trying to calm the waters, trying to see beyond the immediate crisis, the immediate stage four, the immediate fight at Megawatt Park and say, look, how are we going to get ourselves through this? And it doesn't help to have just more revolving doors. How should South Africa be tackling this crisis? Well, this crisis, as I say, is not just operational. <coughs> and uh, it is a crisis that has policy and political implications. So the political cover that the president has provided is important. We need, uh, they need that sort of sense of stability across Megawatt Park. It's a very difficult place to work. It's very hard to be at those power stations at the moment. They're falling over and they need a bit of a morale boost and they need stable leadership. Uh, and I think so that political element is very important. The policy element is also very important. And I think the president in his, in his newsletter also emphasized those policy levers that are taking the eggs outside of this broken Eskom basket, having more generation capacity outside of Eskom, um, having more skills in the system outside of Eskom, and having more people responsible for keeping our lights on. And uh, so really that's where we have to start focusing. The problem is, is the more things change, the more things have to change. And we can see with the 100 megawatt reform, there's still issues constraining really big investment. We know there's 58 projects, that's a lot. <laughs> and uh, they are large. I mean, these are as large as the projects that we've procured under the REAP program. And uh, that's a major investment from the private sector. So we need to get that system oiled. And it is new, and, uh, and I think there's teething problems. But I think eventually uh, the, the, the sort of cover that the president's giving and the emphasis is given to that, I think that's important. We then need to look at our procurement system, the, the centralized procurement. There's already been major delays with the so-called emergency procurement round. There are real concerns about this week whether some of the renewable projects under the, the bid window five will close. It's, there's many, many questions around that. And uh, so that whole thing also needs to be reformed. So we know we've made the change, we've restarted, but th there's conditions of change. So there needs to be reform there so that we actually get more generation capacity into the system. So we really need to focus on that. I think we are getting some of the political leadership we need. We now need the policy alignment and we need all hands on deck. And if there are going to be these ongoing spats and we can't settle them, then I think the president somehow has to get involved directly and needs to have a crisis management approach because this is a deep crisis and not one that we can solve very quickly. They are, uh, everything is slow. The, the maintenance at Eskom is going to take time. The bringing in new capacity is going to take time, which means there will be periods of load shedding. Now we have to navigate this without having these meltdowns between lawmakers, between executives and having mass resignations or calling for people's heads. We need to have an approach where it, we're all pointing in the same direction. Unfortunately, I don't think we're there yet, but this week may be the start of moving that in that direction. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.